Yeah, anybody? Uh, I'll get back to you with that. I'll get back to you with that. <laughs> Did you believe him? No. Sometimes it's like this. I'll get back to you with that. Yeah, all right. Credibility out the window. No way. Okay, thank you. Let's try yours. Oh, oh wait, wait, before, oh, wait, just a minute. Before that, before that, now I want you to add credibility to that. I want you to show and tell the same thing. That's a little better. I think you get Come on, one more time. Or maybe you haven't had a word. I promise I'll get back with you with that. Yeah, good job, good job. Okay, here's, here's the last one. Ooh. <laughs> Should we ask her to, to, to show that she really does? Matchmaker, matchmaker, make me a match. All right, guys, what, what, what we wanted to do here is, again, the verbal and the nonverbal. You can say something, and you can show something, and there can be this massive gap as a leader. If you say one thing, but you're showing another thing, your credibility just goes out the window. It just doesn't work. So let's, okay, the, the cauldron of pleasures and delights. Okay, you guys go for it. Go get your jamba after. There you go, man. Ooh, I don't know. There's something scary in that one. <laughs> I probably should have. Ooh, she got a piggy bank. Well, that was All cool. right, thank you for your help. You. That is fantastic. Go get a jamba. What's your favorite jamba? Razzmatazz? Uh, uh, banana bear. Banana bear. Orange dream machine. Woo. Those are really, really good. Okay, let's see. Um, let's move on here. So leaders are always communicating something. So you've got to be careful what you communicate. Now here's the mathematics I told you that I wouldn't give you. We're using one mathematics thing. It's a greater less than sign, okay? What you show is very often greater than what you tell. That's true, isn't it? You can say one thing, and you can show something different, and the credibility is out the window. Now here's karma. If you can show the behaviors and tell congruent behaviors, then you are in the land of karma. You can't do it every time, but you can do it some of the time. Quick principle, guys, as leaders, be careful what you're communicating because you're going to communicate something. Make sure you do it right, okay? Um, fantastic. You know, we're going to, uh, let's, let's go to leadership principle number two. I'd like to introduce Scott. Wood. I was out in California with Scott. Or, uh, Scott's with IFI Training. It's a local company that trains major companies all around the country on all kinds of aspects of business. Scott is one of the better trainers I've ever seen. We're out in uh, um, uh, uh, Palmdale, California about two months ago. And uh, I'll tell you, I'm very, very impressed. But uh, let's, let's, let's put our hands together for Scott Wood with IFI Training. I'm really excited to be here. This is... Uh this is a really good opportunity for me to kind of showcase what we do, and it's uh, uh, we've got some really important principles to talk about. What did I just communicate? <laughs> just so you know, 80% of what you believe is not what you say. So that goes back to this show plus tell. If there's, if there's incongruence, if I say something but I get a different body language, you're going to believe the body language every single time. Really important. Uh, as Jeff mentioned, uh, I am with IFI Training. We've, we've actually been training in the corporate world for about 15 years. My wife started the company. Yes, I work for my wife. How many of you are married? Wow. Okay. <laughs> I know Jeff is, because I uh, live just down the street from Jeff. Um, a lot of times when I say I work for my wife, all guys say they work for their wives, because that's kind of true. Mine's a little more literal than most. Mine's 24-7. So adds a whole new dimension to the term performance evaluation, but I won't get into that right now. Um, she started the company in 1995. I came to work for them in 1998. So for 12 years, I've been teaching for IFI training. 
As Jeff mentioned, we do work with large aerospace companies, Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, uh, government agencies, the Army. Uh, I've got training coming up in the Army in a couple of weeks. Uh, next week I'll be in Florida teaching these same principles to uh, an organization that can't tell me what they do or who they sell to or who the competition is because it's too secret for me to know. Kind of an interesting organization. Um, if you want to take notes, this is something called the five wave principle. Now, I know a lot of you, when you get into the business environment, you've already seen this actually dealing with family, but it's kind of hyper extended when you get into a business environment where you're going to be dealing with people from different waves. We call this the five wave theory. Understand that the dates that we have up here, the 4000 BC, 1440, 80, 1960, 1990, those are loose dates, meaning it's not an exact science. Some people think of this or try and associate waves with generations. You, some of you maybe have talked about generations in classes where you talk about baby boomers and Gen X, Gen Y, millennials. Uh, this isn't exactly like that because it's not age related. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that here in just a minute. Um, first wave, we call it the manual labor wave. If you want to take notes, there's some information on manual labor wave. So that, the dates on that, 4000 BC, 1440 AD. Everything was manual. If you had work to do, you had to do it with your hands. Very familial. The work structure was the same as the social structure. That was a family. That's why uh, parents had lots of kids, big families. That was the workforce. Somebody tell me why I've got five kids and I cannot get a clean kitchen. It's Obviously, it's because we're not in this wave. Very small social circles. How did we communicate in this wave? What was the method? Face to face, verbal. Now, we've always had one other form of communication, although not as prevalent. What else have we always had? Have always, yeah, how? How correspondence? Letters. We've always had documents. Whether it was written on stone tablets or papyrus or something, we've always had documents. Although, obviously, face-to-face -face, a lot more prevalent. Some people not even trained to read until much later on. Okay, wave two, the dates on this, why would we start the mechanization wave with the date 1440? What was significant in 1440? The Gutenberg printing press. Gutenberg got really sick and tired of hand copying Bibles. And he said, screw this, we're going to develop some faster way. He probably didn't say that exactly, but came up with a Gutenberg printing press. And incidentally, that single piece of technology was the standard for printing presses until well into the 1900s. 500 years, we had one machine. Consider how fast we're turning over technology now. Method of communication. Still had face-to-face -face here. Some people like in the, the tail end of this, Industrial Revolution, obviously. You had the assembly lines, the white-collar, blue-collar mentality. Who wrote documents in the second wave? Who wrote them? The white-collars or the blue-collars? White-collars. White -collars. Who made the presentations? 